Hey guys, it's your buddy Ben coming at you again from Ben's Audio Cave. And today we have got something fun. Um, I'm actually going to try to help you guys record and digitize some vinyl. Now, you may say to yourself, why on earth would I ever want to do that? Well, the answer is sometimes if you're like me, you have a record that you can't find on a streaming platform. Or, hey, maybe you just really like the way the album sounds. Or there's a whole multitude of reasons. Either way, I'm not going to judge you for what you're doing. Some people will tell you this is completely and totally useless. I'm telling you that it, I use it as an audio comparison tool a lot of times. If you, I record it, usually like uh, with the little interface I'm going to show you guys today, it's a 16 uh, bit, 48 hertz, uh, so 1648 sampling rate. Eh, not the greatest, but you know the little device actually allows me to record things on equal playing field, game match them, and then listen to them side by side and do some flips kind of how i've done some of the cartridge comparison videos for you guys except i've used it done it using the video program i want to show you guys that uh, i'm going to show you a couple different programs one of them is audacity which is free you can get that for anything uh you can get it for linux you can get it for mac you can get it for windows i'm sure they make it for some other os's but linux mac windows those are the mainstream ones the other one i want to show you is uh magics formerly sony uh soundforge audio this i want to show you with the cheap one i've used soundforge pro in the past great results so we're going to kick the tires on the 49 dollar version it does have a free trial um i tried the music maker it's just it's not worth showing you guys so i'm going to be bouncing back and forth between a windows box and a mac box kind of give you guys a feel for how each of the um, ones react. I'm going to go through how to use some of the plugins in here so that you guys can actually, you know, set it to where we're going to remove some rumble from here. I'm going to record this on a, a Fisher MT 6330 turntable. So there's going to be some rumble in there. It's not the uh, quietest turntable on earth. Um, you guys can remove some ticks and pops. I'm going to be using a record today. It's like I have before. It's got some less than perfect uh, surface noise on there. And I'm going to show you guys how to remove that using both the noise reduction program in Audacity. I've got a standalone uh, program for Windows only. And then I've got the SoundForge, which actually has its own plugins built into it as well. Uh, there's some arguments on this doesn't exactly capture the waveform. To me, you know, you can remove ticks, you can remove pops, that's easy. You can remove uh, the rumble and the sound, also easy. What's the effects of it? Eh, I guess we're just going to have to see um, with the different versions. So I'll give some final thoughts after this, but without further ado, let's jump in. Let's get started. This is going to be a little bit longer, and it's going to be a little bit nerdy, but we're going to have some fun. All right. So let's go through a little bit of the hardware that's going to be involved here. Today, we're going to use uh, a few of the following things. So I've got this Behringer, and it don't look like much, but it's a Behringer U-Control UCA 200. All this little guy is, is a two-in, two-out USB 2.0 sound device. It's got a max resolution of 16-bit. Uh, 48 kilohertz it's going to be fine for what we are going to do this works with both macintosh and uh windows and linux and it's available for right around oh i don't know 20 25 30 bucks max you can generally just find some of these out here this one's actually quite old it's worked well the other thing that's going to go with this is following so i have got myself An RCA, two RCA, to eighth inch stereo adapter cord. Why? Because I can take this, plug it into the input here, and then I can take this pretty much into the headphone jack of anything, uh, headphone jack output, and then I've got signal. 
Now, this is one of the ways that I have actually captured in a couple of the other shootouts, this Emotiva PT100 preamp over here. I just plug it straight into the headphone jack. Why? Because I've got all the tone flat. It puts it pretty much everything on there. I'm using the phono preamp there. That's it. You're coming right out of this preamp. Now, that Emotiva, if I felt like unhooking my amp down there, also has RCA output. So one of your other options, and this is the one we're going to use today, is this RCA cord. Now, what are you going to do with this? Well, I'm going to take this. I'm going to plug it again into the input, left, right, real easy. This is not a spectacularly expensive cord. This is stupid cheap. I think it actually came with one of those that I don't use it anymore. Um, so what I'm going to do with this is I've actually got a ship many uh, phone preamp in here. I'm going to hook this directly off of my phone preamp. If you have a turntable with a built-in phono preamp, you can also hook it directly into here. Some of you are lucky enough to have a turntable that has USB out, or should I say unlucky enough. Uh, the, one of the, it's a trade-off. There's a lot of turntables that have the USB out that, don't, that aren't very good at being a turntable. They're pretty good at being an audio digitizer, but they're not very good at being a turntable because they'll have like a ceramic cart, or they'll have a lot of rumble, or they'll be have a lot of woe and flutter. So you might want to use a... a used or uh, or vintage higher quality turntable to capture it with your own cartridge on there hey this is your this is your trick so that's that's what i'm doing i'm going to hook this right into the ship mani today we don't i haven't done that in the past video i was going to do that today and uh then i'll show you guys kind of how to set the levels uh, on this guy to have it record you don't want to redline your levels so everything's compete depressed or blah just yucky you don't want to hit the peaks. You don't, also don't want to record it so quiet that you're going to have to add a whole lot of post-process uh, digital gain into it. We're going to add a little, but you don't want to add a ton of it. So, you know, we could use any of this. I'm not going to use this one today. We're going to use the one in the office today. And I'm going to go in there right now. So as promised, or should I say as threatened, we're here in the office. So let me show you what we're going to be working with today. I'm going to move this. I'm going to try to take it slow. Okay, so as promised, or should I say as threatened, <laughs> I've got a, uh, I'm here in the office. So let's take a look and see what we're working with. So first things first that we see is, and I'm going to try to keep this as, unblare witchy as possible we're not going to really be using this uh receiver today we could have hooked in as i told previously into this headphone out of this receiver this receiver actually has a line out too we could have used it but let's go to what else we're going to be using today which is aha the shit manny right so look at here. This is just a nice little phono box. This is cheap. It's about a hundred bucks. A lot of you guys will use these shit manis. It isn't my favorite. I'm not going to lie and tell you it is. But hey, it does a good job uh, for what it costs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I am going to hook up my trusty rusty turn this just ever so slightly my trusty rusty rca cable here into the out of the mani now red to red white to white pretty easy as you can see i've already got my phono preamp my phono not my phono preamp that's what this is my phono actually hooked up this is this over here this is the Fisher uh, Studio Standard MT6330. We're on, we're on, we're good. Now, I'm going to take this out of the Phono Pre, take this input, R, right, red, left, white. Okay. Boom, we're done. So now, let's go over the turntable we're going to be using here. So let me scoot you down just a hair so we can get a good look at him here. 
All right, so this is nothing spectacular. I got this turntable for free 93. I have labeled him the cheapskate. Um, I do have an Ortofon 2M black cartridge mounted on this because I had it left from my other one. So no big deal. Uh, we've got a good, a pretty good cartridge. We've already got him set at 1.6 grams to track, which is roughly what it suggests. We've got our Peter Gabriel So album here. It is clean. It is ready to go. It is got a big scratch right there. And hopefully we'll hear that because I want to address it. So what am, what's next? So let's look over here. So if you'll notice, I have my Macintosh here, but I'm filming this video on it. So I'm not really going to be using it. Instead, I'm going to be using, let me lower you guys down just a little. I'm going to be using this Windows box. And it is actually a file server, music server, whatever. I've got another one over here too. But this is one of my servers. It also does some of my Plex server serving. Um, it's running server 2019, but that's very similar to, uh, uh, to Windows 10. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very quickly just connect this into the front USB. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remote desktop into this, and then I'm going to do some screen sharing, and I'm going to show you what we do from here to capture audio using uh, Audacity. All right, guys, so look, you see my desktop now. I'm on the Macintosh. Okay, so now you guys are here at my Macintosh's desktop. Let's open up Microsoft Remote Desktop. I'm going to remote into that machine that I showed you guys earlier. Connecting. Aha, look at there. Now we're there. Uh, we've already got Audacity open. Let's close that. I, I do want to go through some things really quickly with you guys to make sure that we've got our levels on our microphone and everything set up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you can do this a million different ways. But I'm going to actually open the control panel from here. Why? Because all of the new versions of Windows settings suck. <laughs> let's, let's be honest. They do. There's some things you have to open them to do. But the classic is control panel classic is always going to be the most responsive. So we see our speakers here. It's set as the default. Uh, now let's go here to recording. So this is our microphone. This is this is this. This is the USB codec. Says it right here. USB codec. Let's go to listen. We don't want to do that. Levels. Notice I pre-selected 38. There's a reason why. Because it defaulted at 54. And let me show you something. First of all, first things first. We got to do. Let's 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 forget. I showed you labels. Go to advanced. When you plug this guy in, it defaults to, I think, one channel, 16-bit, 44,100 hertz CD quality. We want to record stereo. We want to record both of our channels here, right? So we want to tell it two channel, highest quality, 1648. We're going to allow all the applications to take control and give priority and all that. That's the default. So levels. It's at 38 now. Let's turn it back to 54 where it was. Okay. Now, watch, watch this meter here. I'm just going to go here and I'm just going to go drop a needle on the record really quick. Just pick up. Look at that. That doesn't look like it's going to make a very good recording because look at what it's doing. So let's go here to properties and let's go here to levels. And I'm actually going to put it, well, maybe not. I'm actually going to put it back down to 38 where it was. Now let's look. Ah, that's much better. I mean, you could run this a little hotter if you wanted to. I like to run it about here. It's going to be pretty good. Let me uh, pull up my... 
Okay, so there we go. Now let's say okay. And let's close our control panel because we're done with this for now. So let's go ahead and let's open up our Audacity software here. Okay, I don't want you to show me anything else because you suck. First thing we want to do is we want to go to Edit and Preferences, Recording, Device, Microphone. Channels, two stereo. We do not want mono. We want both of them. Playback, recording, yada yada. We're going to leave all that default. So, uh, da -da -da -da. file, new, I'm just telling it new project. Let's look at this. Project rate 48,000 because that's what's native for our codec. Now, Look at here what happens when I hit record. Hey, look at there. We're recording audio. You know, that's pretty good, but there's a problem. And the problem is that we haven't queued our record yet. We haven't got it on there yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and I'm going to say file. New. Make sure we got our rate is forty eight thousand. Okay. So I'm going to hit pause here and record. Notice it's not going anywhere. This is what you call arming. Record. So let's go over here to the turntable. Okay. So you can see this now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this close, if not a little bit beforehand. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe my stylus off because I don't want to make it any worse than possible, right? Now. Let me check my strobe. All looks good. Steady speed. I want to cue this here. But the deal is, I kind of want to cue this just a little bit early so that um, so that we're okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unarm it right now. And I'm just going to tell this to go down. As you can see, Recording. It's getting to the silent part. And then our actual track we're trying to record is going to start. Still silent. And this will be recording we'll want to cut out. I'll show you guys how to do that later. Aha, and there we go. There's starts our waveforms going through there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually stop our screen recording and let this whole thing record or at least get it down there. I, I don't want you guys to hear like 10 minutes of silence while this thing's recorded. So let's, let's go ahead and we'll stop the recording now and I'll pick it back up once we're close to the beginning. Okay, guys, we're back. So as you can see by the waveform, this is kind of completed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and I'm going to go to view. So I'm going to show you guys what it's going to look like. I'm going to go to zoom out. So let me move me out of your all's way too. So there we go. All right. So I got our scroll bars here. Look at there. Somebody really compressed the crap out of this track when they cut it. We're not hitting their waveform limits here, but like that, that's that was what was on the grooves. You see, somebody got a little see square parts. This is where somebody got a little uh 
happy with the compressor plug in it doesn't start out that way and then all of a sudden it just kicks in here we can actually hear this let me see that so that's kind of what happened so let's uh let's scroll through here Now look, let me do another zoom out here real quick. All right, this is where we started and dropped our needle. All right, so we can see that. So let's look and see where our other one started. Let's go here. And there it is. We can hear it popping and clicking. So let's see. Okay, so what we're going to do at this point is we're going to go to here and we're going to do oh, i forgot how this thing shift select i forget how to navigate this thing this thing tracks transport Cursor to track start J. Okay, so we're going to go shift J. Look at there, we got it selected. Delete. All right, so J. We're, we're at home now, right? So let me see if we're okay. So now. And right here is the end, right? Okay, so we've got our base track. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to save or export this as a wave. And I'm actually going to put this on my desktop and call it Sledgehammer Un touched we get we can add our artist here now this metadata won't necessarily come on over on a wave but uh, sledge hammer ah if i could type it'd be different album title so track number o2 year what was our year? I should be I should be beat for not knowing this. I'm showing how old I'm getting. Nineteen eighty six. Okay, you don't have to put this in here. I'll go ahead and do it though. Uh, genre comments. I'm gonna put in comments. Recorded from Fisher MT sixty three. 30 Ortofon 2M Black. Okay. All right. So now we got our, our way. So now let's work on some cleanup here a little bit. So, first things first, I'm hoping you're getting these system sounds. First things first, let's look at this. we got all manner of ugly sound happening right there at the beginning. Rumble, et cetera, et cetera. So let's go to where the music actually starts here.
and it's right there. So if we go Shift J, that's going to select our home point. Now go here to Effect. Now maybe I'm wrong. Tools, noise reduction. There we are. Noise reduction. 24 dB. Uh, noise reducer. We're going to hit Get Noise Profile. All right. So all that does is this takes us and it gets the noise profile. So now we're going to do a Control A. It's going to select everything. Go to Effect. Noise Reduction. And tell it OK. So it's got its noise profile. It's applying it. There we go. So now let's see what it sounds like. got some clicks and pops but what we don't have is noise that sounds good it's loud all right and that is what you would do to fix that with um, uh, to to fix it with the noise reduction there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close Audacity at this point, and now we're going to open up our next program. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys how the Audacity program works from the Macintosh as well. So I've already got everything set up, so I'm just going to go ahead and open. I've copied this wave over here, so I'm just going to go ahead and open this with Audacity. Okay, let's we'll tell it to read it from the original. And here we have our recording, right? So let's see what it sounds like. Got some poppies and crackies. So let's let's use our Macintosh and get rid of it. So let me go ahead and zoom in here so we can see where this starts. So this should be the start of the track. And it is. So let's kill this. I'm going to do Shift J. That's going to take us to the beginning. Believe it or not, these hotkeys are universal across platform for Audacity. Now I'm going to go to. Effect, Noise Reduction, and I'm going to hit Get Noise Profile. Now what does that do? That just set this right here as what it's going to remove out of the rest of the recording. So now I'm going to hit Command-A, the same thing as Control-A in Windows. Then I'm going to hit Effect, Noise Reduction. We can preview it if we want to. And that was okay. Let me, let me, okay. So then let's tell it okay. All right. It's doing its thing. <laughs> All right, we're good. So now, let's see what that sounds like. Ah, much better. Still got some pops and clicks, but I'm not going to get rid of those with Audacity. Now, one more thing. Let's, let's zoom back out here. I'm going to do another Control A, another Command A here. One of the other effects I like to do is to normalize things. 
I want to normalize it to 0 dB. Now, this is not going to compress it. This is just going to change the gain. Now it's going to scan. It's going to make it 0 dB. So let me tell it OK. And now, everything's set to 0 level. It's going to be kind of hot. So let's see. You can really hear those clicks and pops now. But now let's, here it is. All right, so there we go. Now, what if I want to make this a FLAC file? File, export, export audio. Sledgehammer, and we will call this normalized noise reduced and here we have our options we can do a flac we can do an m4a we can do an mp3 we can do other uncompressed files so let's let's say we want to do a m4a aac we've got quality here all right so we could do an eighth if we wanted to we could do uh several things so what are we going to do? I'm going to do it as a flat file. And uh, no need to do 24-bit uh, bit depth. I will save this to getting that inconvenient time. I will save <laughs> I will save this to my desktop for right now. Hang on one moment here. Tell it my bank big pro. Again, inconvenient. Desktop. There we go. And save. Ah, look at here. It picked up my thing. So we got our all of our things in here, but I'm also going to put in here. Normalized and noise reduced. Okay. And we'll tell that. Okay. Here we go. And now we have a flag. So I'm going to go ahead and quit Audacity here. Do I want to save changes? No, because I want to reuse this file. Don't want to restart Microsoft Outlook. I want it to go away. Why in the world would you start updating stuff? Okay, anyway. So here we go. Here is uh, Black. So let's open this with our good old VLC player here. Now, there we go. Starting to play. But wait, what does it sound like versus the untouched one? Here, let me see if I can just drag this in here to the playlist. Do, do, do. Oh, are you kidding me? Not? Okay, so. There's the noise reduced one. There's the unnoise reduced one. Noise reduced. Unnoise reduced. All right. Awesome. So now, what's next? All right. So th here is the deal. I had to actually switch over to my pc for this um so we've got our untouched wave here and i'll just open it here with my groove music real quick here are the pops here are the ticks 
Okay. So there's a way to get rid of this in Audacity. There's a lot of long videos about it. It's very manual. This is something I found interesting is this wave corrector here. This is actually free. So I went ahead and just, I'm going to open this. Okay, scan. Found all these clicks. Now it's got the list over here of the clicks. So it'll actually let us hear them and how it's fixed them. So let's see. Oh, look. Silent, silent, silent. But notice. It's cut out part of our music. So you can go here and you can say, hey, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. But I think there's a reason why this went free. Uh, because mm, let's just say it's a little bit hard to use. And when you go to try to actually, you know, change the settings and stuff. It's not the best. So I suggest against this one. So I'm going to tell it do not save. I'm going to try this one. This is one that's $30. It looked like it was pretty cheesy too, but I haven't tried this one at all yet. So you're going to be seeing something that I see. So, all right, we got our vinyl studio. Yeah, we're smart. We don't have to do this. Okay, so now this one it actually lets you record and do all that. But what we're going to do is, let me move me over here, down to here. We're going to actually import a sound file. So there we are. Ah, it's going to make us enter in our metadata again. Nineteen eighty six. All right. All right. Imported successfully. Now I've never used this, so we're going to see how hard it is to use. All right. So it's found it. It's found there. Wave, okay, wait for a needle down. Speed conversion. This has got some neat stuff in here, but let's see what we can do with it, actually. Okay. Clean up audio. All right. So here's the interface for cleaning up the audio. Let's see what it allows us to do. Uh, aha, scan for clicks. Uh, sensitivity. It's got this percussion protection on here too, and this brass protection, which I've seen, which I'm actually kind of interested about. And, oh, it's got this if you've recorded it without a preamp. That's pretty neat. Okay, so we'll tell it to scan. We found many more, many less clicks, let's see. Of which 553 repaired. 400 said, okay, so it's actually done something. So let's see what it sounds like. Oh, listen to that. It didn't kill that. So. Neat. Okay, so let's listen to here and see if it made it sound weird or something. No. No, it actually sounds pretty good. So. 
let's see if we've got any other options here, like to normalize or anything. Options, settings. Uh, rumble filter on. We don't want to add any graphic equalizer or anything. We just want to turn the rumble filter on. And hit save. Let's see what it sounds like over here. Ah, no rumble. Nice. Okay. Close this. Now, let's see how hard it is to export it. <laughs> uh, close collection, save collection. Save work in progress. Ah, and here we go. We can save it as ALAC, Apple Lossless, which, or AIF, which I like a lot. Or black, and then here we've got black file options. Same as recorded. There we go. Tell it OK. Save corrected audio. All right, so let's save it to the desktop and see what happens. All right, so let's check it out now. I'm going to go ahead and close the program. Ah, right there it is. Exported black. Okay, so. Huh. Okay. Uh, I actually think that this is a halfway decent program. Wow, I may actually buy this. Like, for real. And I'm not being silly. So the other one that I've looked here is the, and by the way, this vinyl cleaning studio, they've got it for Mac too. So this is the other one that I downloaded and it's a Soundforge cleaning studio. Um, let me exit that for right now. Let me show you what else I found. I, I found this Neat too. This is one of the plugins, ISO, that comes with Soundforge Cleaning Studio. Now, Soundforge Cleaning Studio is available for $59.99 right now from uh, Dell. So that's pretty neat. So, okay, we know blah, blah, trial mode. So this, I've opened Sledgehammer here. And this is the waveform. So let me show you something I found really neat about this ISO. So... It actually has a setting here for vinyl record, and it actually will output clicks only if you preview it. So check this out. That's what it's removing. And you see the sensitivity, we've got it set down to, uh, or set up to five, we've left it on the default. Now this is what I find pretty interesting. So it's not removed any of the doo -doo 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 stuff, but, Listen, that's music. That's music it's removing. Uh, that brass protection uh, that Vinyl Studio had or whatever, well, it seems like it stopped that. So let's set the scene. Okay. So there it's about removing, it's quit removing music. Okay, so let's hit home here. Let's hear what it review removed here. Which it still sounds good, but keep in mind, this is a much more expensive program here. The one thing this doesn't have, it's got a normalize function, but it, uh, But it doesn't have a, so. It's 
It's got a normalized function, but it doesn't have a, a rumble filter I've been able to find on here, which is less than useful if you're using this standalone. Now, this does come part of the SoundForge package. Uh, so we'll visit that here in just a second. Okay, so I had to like actually take it offline and register this SoundForge cleaning lab. I've got a trial right now. I'm not just going to go randomly spend 50 or 60 bucks. I'm still trying to figure some stuff out. I own an old version of SoundForge Pro, which I actually find to be the best, but I'm not going to sit here and recommend that any of you folks pay like 300 bucks for something to record vinyl with, only unless you want to. And I'll tell you, SoundForge Pro is great if you want to but i'm seeing if we can get there for about 60. so here's the cleaning lab all right start trial version test program we've already got a trial key 30-day trial interesting see how functional it is so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to open okay load audio file this one's a little bit different than uh we don't want to go there. There we go. Sledgehammer untouched. All right. So there we are. You know, let's see, make sure we got. Yep, there it is, and all its poppy, clack, cracky goodness. So cleaning. So this is kind of interesting. So let's go to vinyl. Mediocre, bad. Well, this just has a whole chain of plugins it's going to do. All right, let's see what it does. Wow, I don't know that I would have used all those plugins okay so let's see what it actually did sounds clean So it did a lot of stuff, and that's that's neat if you're just like not caring. Let's see what happens now. Oh, still on there. So let's let's turn off all these things here. Let's see what happens now. Okay, it's back. So, remove clicks, only heavy clicks. Remove crackling, only strong crackling. That's pretty neat, but let's see if we can manually do this. Okay, clean. De clicker, de crackler. Remove clicks, only heavy. Move cracking, only strong. Set. Hmm. Interesting. But what's going on down here? That, that's my question. Um, Uh-oh. I uh, almost killed it. So, let's see. Loudness, dynamics. 
Okay, sound clone or brilliant? No, we don't want any of that. Where's just the Brumble filter? That's all I'm really looking for. Uh, maybe it's going to be under parametric equalizer. Super woofer. New. No. Oh, we don't really want any of that either. I don't want a parametric equalizer on here. So no. Let's see what else we got here. Cleaning. Yeah, this is a optimized sound. Apply loudness. No, we don't want to do any of this. We want it to be as close as possible. Okay, so that's neat. All right, there's a Rhea. <laughs> We've got a Dolby encoder on here. That's easy. That's awesome. There's a noise gate. Special effects. Where is the crossover at? There we go. Plug in browser. The clicker, the noise. Uh, Why that? And we get our eyes open. You click, the noise. Okay, so this is what I'll tell you. This is not like I get. I guess if I went here and just told it auto on everything, it would be fine. I'm really scared of how this is going to step on our vinyl, and the reason is is I'm going to tell it not to save. I'm not going out and paying fifty bucks for this thing. Uh, it, it's just it doesn't it doesn't really strike me as something I'm going to find terribly useful. The reason why is uh, the SoundForge I'm used to actually has like pro grade plugins in it. Okay, it's got uh, crossovers, filters, and I guess I'm spoiled because I got used to using it and. Honestly, I'm just not paying that amount of money. So let's look at this. And this is Vinyl Studio. That's the one I brought up. Yeah, the interface is kind of clunky, but it's got Discogs in integration, right? It's $29.95 or $49.95. So if I go here to buy, I can buy it for Windows or Macintosh or Pro. Let's see what's this. Okay, so what's it? The following features are pro only. Manual click repair, cue sheets, which, not burning CDs. You guys might. Okay, so I'm going to buy pro here. I'm actually probably going to go ahead and buy this. Why? Mm. It just seems like a better program to me so i haven't tried it on the mac yet but i will say audacity i'll i'm I'm, I'm gonna stop right there we'll skip to a final thought with uh with full video in here wow so what about that i, I know this video was kind of long but let's let's talk about some things because i've learned some things today so here's the thing i've been recording albums now since the early 2000s. That's, if, if I'm going to be forthright with you guys, I've been doing mastering and recording digitally and stuff back when there was a lot of limitations, space was at a limit and everything. So this isn't new for me. It, it's really funny because it seems like there's actually lack of options uh, of mastering software. They've kind of dumbed it down to where people want to do things automatically or it's way too manual. So, so this is what I'll tell you. For free, Audacity is going to be the best and the easiest way to actually get the initial 
wave or a for whatever you want to save it as into your computer as far as if you're just looking for something free that you could do it with that's great you can use their built-in plugins you can go through and you can manually de-click your albums and remove the crackles or you can leave them in there depending on how bad it is i mean if it's just like lot like the ones that we were messing with sometimes i'll just leave them in there why because they're not creating any unnecessary peaks in the music or anything like that and hey it's it's all part of the experience sometimes i'll remove them if if i just want to keep something but here's what we want to make sure that we understand when you remove anything that you've recorded because digital can be a good medium to record like the representation of the master okay it, it can be because a lot of our music is going to be made from a digital master whether you like it or not they're not all analog tapes okay the mastering and the way that it's actually on there with out compression and everything is what we're chasing anyway so that's why you would do that or if you're recording something that you can't get anymore can't find on a streaming platform yes awesome sauce so let's talk though of the paid options um and i'm not saying it's exhaustive the list i've done the soundforge pro is always going to be my favorite okay if you don't want to spend 300 bucks for a program don't do it um the soundforge cleaning studio mm, somewhat useful you know it's 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 not it's got a whole lot of automation in it and if you're just looking for something one button click that's fine but as you could see in the waveform it's it's removing quite a bit of the music same thing with that iso plugin that's actually comes with the soundforge uh cleaning studio so it's 99 if you buy it from Magix. If you buy it from Dell, it's 59.99. It only runs on Windows. Mm, I don't know. That's that's not. I I don't see. I started to pull the trigger now. The very mo the wave corrector that's only a Windows program. It definitely removes all the clicks and half the music. <laughs> so I wouldn't recommend that one either. There's a reason sometimes why things are free. Audacity is kind of an anomaly in that aspect because it's actually pretty powerful if you're willing to put in the time. Um, the one thing that really uh, shocked me was the Vinyl Studio Pro. The Vinyl Studio Pro actually seems like it removes less uh, of the actual recording when you do it it's got discogs integration to look things up so if it's not in the cddb and it was never released on uh, there it can actually look in the discogs uh, which a lot of us use discogs uh, to catalog our albums and things it's super neat uh, i like the integration the interface looks lousy i'm not gonna lie but it's sometimes it's not all about uh, selling the sizzle there's a lot of steak on that plate all right so i'm hoping that you guys aren't more confused than when i started um I, i'm not really i'm not paid to endorse any of these products i'm not endorsing one i'm just telling you based on what i found out with you guys on this journey my conclusions and this comes from someone that's used cakewalk pro studio or uh Pro Studio. That ain't, that's that's the old Rena Center speakers who has used uh, Pro Tools, rather. Um, so I've used a lot of the mastering platforms, and I will tell you, Audacity's still great for free. Uh, the Vinyl Studio might be something you guys might want to consider. Give it a check out. You can do uh, use it on five albums for free. So why not just at least get a trial? Uh, might be helpful. All right, so if you found this video helpful, I'd appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up. If uh, you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. If you've got any questions or concerns, uh, drop, me, drop them in the comments. All right, until next time, I'll see you from Ben's Audio Cave.